We know the devastation that has taken place since the 1960s. That there have been so many that have been led astray by these false prophets. We see the almost unlimited amount of scandal that happens in this Nova Soto church. And we certainly remember the, those words from Zacharias that were reiterated by Pope Leo XIII. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. And this morning I want to talk to you briefly about shepherds. Really about religious vocations, especially that of the priesthood. We know very well that there are three vocations. The vocation to married life, the vocation to the single life, and the vocation to the religious life. And it's this vocation I want to focus on for this one. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 19, The real words of Christ. If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast to give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. A little earlier in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, there's a beautiful parable that our Lord gives. And this, though it is a parable that is given us on a different Sunday, actually. I want to speak a little bit about this part. I think it illustrates very well this vocation to the religious life. And that is the parable of the pearl of great price. He talks, our Lord talks about a merchant. That this merchant's great ambition is to find gems and pearls. And he comes upon knowledge that there is this Wherein lies the pearl of great, great value. And he immediately sells all that he has that he might acquire this field that that pearl of great price might be his own. He says that this particular type, this pearl of great price. There's a beautiful book. The book is called The Anchor Book by Enid Dennis. And this book, more or less, is based upon this parable of our book, The Pearl of Great Price. The, briefly, the, the story is about a young woman who has basically everything the world has to offer. She was born into a very noble and wealthy family. She has exquisite beauty. She has a very bright wit, very intelligent. She has a wonderful personality and everyone loves her. But one time she hears a sermon given on this very Christ and she understands in her heart somehow that this pearl is the only object worth possessing. She sets upon a mission to obtain this pearl of great price. <laughs> she goes to seek the advice of a holy anchorite. An anchorite is someone who, in medieval times, would build a cell against the church wall. There was a slit in the church wall that they could receive communion, but otherwise, they were more or less harmless. Sometimes it would be a window. That they would give spiritual advice to others. But she wants to seek the advice of this holy anchorite. She asks him, Father, how does one obtain this skill? How do I take that pearl of your price? And essentially, his answer was, It's different for everyone. But there is one essential element. That is that you pay the last farthing. That is the last penny. No matter what your possessions. So long as you give the last one, you will have the purchasing power to take that to, to make 
her great possessions, everything, to become this hermit. But she finds out very quickly that it's a lot more than money and power that one has to give up. There's this little thing called pride. And it's self-pity. And she learns as she progresses in the spiritual life that these indeed are possessions that human nature holds very dear. But my dear friends, even though this story might have a very particular application to one seeking a religious vocation, we can apply it to ourselves, all of us. But ultimately we have but one vocation. We are meant to obtain heaven. We have to obtain that if we want to obtain heaven. So back to the religious life. Who, who is called to the religious life anyway? And how can a person know? And something I read, I believe it was St. Alphonsus. He maintains that there are two types of callings. There's what he called a specific call, where God infuses a, a certain grace into a person's heart where they might just know. They know that they're meant to consecrate themselves to God. But he says that this vocation is very rare. But the second type of calling is what he calls a general call. They might, these people might not receive a special invitation, but they have the requisites, they have what is necessary to consecrate themselves to God. And these qualifications are very simple. One must only have good moral character, live their Catholic faith, average intelligence, and reasonably good health. There was an analogy I heard from another priest that helped to illustrate this very beautifully. And he said that Christ is our King, as we know, but he sits upon his throne, and we all as Catholics are called to be members of his court. But he does call certain people from among this court to come out a little closer, to be in his immediate vicinity, in his special circle, so to say. And these are religious. He gives them the grace to separate themselves from the community of the court. But there are those that refuse his invitation. And we can imagine the hurt this does to our Lord's Sacred Heart, the disappointment that they spurn his invitation. But on the other side, there might be those people that of their own will want to approach. They want to come a little closer to our Lord. They want to be in His inner circle. And even though they have not received a special invitation, if they approach, this is very pleasing to our Lord. He gives them the grace necessary to be in this inner circle. And these are those people, you might say, have a general vocation. But how many have that generosity? How many have that courage? And this is, I believe, a great dilemma. We know the words from Scripture, the harvest indeed is great, the laborers are few. And many are called, but few are chosen. I would like the young 
people in our parish. To consider this, I'm not saying that everyone has the calling to a religious state, but consider it. Do I have the courage? Do I have the generosity to approach our Lord? To see if He wants me in His inner circle? Maybe He has not given an invitation because He wants it to come from us. He wants that generosity of heart. If you do not have the strength, if you do not have the generosity, who will? But for those of us who are not still discerning what our specific vocation may be, we can take an active part in this great cause. First, by our good example. That we do not make any unnecessary distractions for those that might be trying to hear God's call. Especially the parents. We know that primarily the strength to follow these vocations comes from the family, from the home life, from a good Catholic household. But all of us certainly ought to pray. The harvest and be as great, the laborers of you. Pray, therefore, our Lord says, the Lord of the harvest, that he may send laborers into the harvest. Pray that those called, the priests and religious that we have, are not wolves and sheep's clothing, that they can respond to that grace, that they can be worthy of being in Christ's inner circle. But my dear friends in Christ, we are certainly all called these things. Whether we are meant to lead and then spiritually or not, we are all that virgin seeking that field wherein is the pearl of great price. So let us give our all. Whether we have a million dollars or we have one penny, let us love our Lord with all of our hearts that we may find that we may obtain